You. Yeah, you. You are not fair. Seriously, though, do you really think you're a fair person? Totally unbiased, that you give everyone an equal shot regardless of who they are? Well, I'm sure many of you think so and mean it. So it is my pleasure to bum you out. But you're not. Whether we mean to or not, human beings naturally think in terms of groups. Race, religion, astrology sign, favorite sports team, you name it. Some people happen to fall into our group and others don't. There is a natural side effect to this ingrained habit. We feel like we can relate more to people in our group, and by extension, we show a lot more empathy to those people. People not in our group, on the other hand, we just don't care about as much. This not-so-great divide is what's known as the empathy gap. Now, I know, I know. You think this doesn't apply to you, because you treat everyone fairly. Well, go with me on this. We found a study that you can check out down in the description. And with some minor tweaks, we're going to recreate it and show you that the empathy gap is real. For this experiment, we selected a group of people who had two important traits. They were all women, and they were all white. We told them we were testing how well people understand stories by making them listen to one by a woman named Natasha. Your goal is to listen to the story as quickly as you can, but also still understand Natasha's emotions by the end of it. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Natasha's story was a long and heartbreaking account of her experience when a relative was diagnosed with cancer. It's pretty long and detailed, so when it's playing, feel free to fast forward uh, as much as you like. Here's the kicker, though. The recording everyone listened to was the same, but half our participants got a different impression of Natasha than the other half. If they listen for longer, it means they're trying harder to understand how she felt. It means they're showing more empathy. I'm going to talk about how my grandmother died a few months ago. She was a lot more than a grandmother to me, and we were really close. Um, like, when I was really little, she would make tents out of sheets, and we would, like, crawl under them and have... I had so she'd tell me stories, and then when I got older... It was like I could talk to her about anything, you know, and no matter what, it was like she always found a way to help me without like making me feel judged or like being pushy about it. And she taught me a lot about life. The kind of person who just made people happier because she was always happy. I don't know many people like that. Before I tell you the results, there is another twist. We actually ran this experiment twice, except the second time, one thing was different about our participants. So a year ago, um, she was diagnosed with cancer. I just kept thinking, how could this be happening to, to my grandma, you know? Um, I just remember having so many different emotions and like feeling so hopeless, I guess. I was surprised that I, I felt so scared to talk to her. You know, I used to feel like I could talk to her about anything and now it was like, I didn't have anything to say. You know, I, I loved her so much and it really hurt to have to say goodbye. It just seems so impossible and strange to think that you know, she's there one day and then, like, gone the next day. In the end, participants listened to Natasha an average of three minutes and three seconds longer when they thought she was the same race. And that was more or less the same for both groups. They all showed more empathy to Natasha when she was part of their group. And they did it without even realizing it. So I told you that the goal was to listen as quickly as possible but while still understanding her emotions. And you didn't skip through any of the story. So why, why do you think that is? too close to home, too much like my experience. When it's a personal story, I want to hear what that person has to say out of respect for the person. I don't want to skip anything. You know, I didn't want to miss anything crucial, but I also didn't really uh, feel like all the details were that relevant. Because I had been in a similar experience, I almost predicted what she could, what she said before she said it. So you didn't feel the, the need to maybe listen to it because you already knew what she was going to say, you think? Yeah. Because every time I skipped ahead, I missed something. Mm -hmm. um, and even if I missed a couple of words and picked up in the middle, everything that she was saying seemed very, very important to her. My grandmother died from cancer, and I can definitely empathize because my grandma even looked a little bit like her, which is a little <laughs> interesting to me. I could almost see and remember my grandmother more clearly because of the story 
Instagram because of the photo. It's like, oh wow, this, this reminds me of my family. I looked at her and I, I'm like, yeah girl, I understand. <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, to be pregnant, because she's a young black woman, I was thinking a lot about my experiences at her age. And anytime somebody tells us a story, um, that's it's their story, but I think what was playing through my head almost the entire time was my own. I have a five-year-old grandson now, so in picturing her, I'm thinking about him. What I imagine is my daughter, who's now one and a half, telling this kind of story about her grandma someday. I'm praying and hoping that I'm giving the same kind of experiences and that same kind of love. So I was thinking about her and thinking about him and... Especially the part where she says she feels so lucky to have gotten to know her grandma that not all kids get that opportunity. Hmm, it hits home. So when you look at Natasha here, what do you see? I see me. Um, and then I see Faye, all grown up. She's just good people. And she's a lot like me. I have a confession to make. Okay. We have not been completely forthcoming. Okay. This is not a photo of Natasha. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, throughout the day, we've been using different photos of Natasha. We've been using a fo this photo and a photo of a white woman. If Natasha wasn't an African-American mm -hmm. woman, do you think it would have changed how you listened to the story at all? It still would have resonated. It's just that she resonates even more. The skin part just makes us more of a sisterhood in terms of visualization. But what she was saying is, is, is universal. You might assume that this person has had an upbringing that's like yours. And so you kind of want to find those things in their story that you can relate to because everybody wants to relate to somebody. And maybe that's a reason why people are afraid to to really connect to people who look different than them is because everyone is looking for relationship. So because you and this photo of Natasha look so much alike, do you think it helped you connect with her? Uh, do I think so? No, um, but I guess that's the point, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> we don't, we're not so great at judging ourselves sometimes. No, we're not. <laughs> now, I wanna be clear, we're not saying they're bad people. It's just the empathy gap in action. The empathy gap doesn't only occur between people of different races, though. We just use that for today's example. People create this gap when they start excluding people from their group for any number of reasons, like gender or politics or religion. So the next time you're not seeing eye to eye with someone, try looking past who they are and hear what it is they have to say. You might be more alike than you think. So bad cake.